Greetings, I am Shad. Now, you may notice that I talk about swords a lot. You were forewarned in my video introduction, so it shouldn't be too much of a surprise. What can I say? I like swords. And in my videos, you will notice me using several sword replicas, whether they are handmade, as in wooden, or synthetic sparring swords, like the ones you see in my backdrop. And you'll see me handling hopefully real swords, or at least approximations of real swords. So if I do have access to approximations of real swords, you might be wondering, why do I use wooden ones? Well, the simple answer is, I can't afford real ones. I mean, you know, there are some uh, competitively priced options out there, but I just don't have the money. So I built these with much attention to detail, love, care, and sweat. Mm, not much sweat. Because though I have access to, uh, and I call them approximations of real swords because in my opinion they're actually not real swords, I do have access to them. They're not good to show as representations. The primary being is that they're really badly made in proportion and quality. And that's a good subject for a video. We'll get to that. I'm just going to show you some of my wooden replicas here. So I built these to be historically accurate, perfectly proportioned as you would find in the historical examples of real swords. You'll notice the crossguard, or you might know them also as quillins, is thin. Okay? You'll notice the sword itself is very thin. You'll notice it's got a taper as well. Now you probably can't see it, but Trust me, it has a distal taper, I put it on with a router. And so, it's the best I can do, but they'll certainly be able to demonstrate what I'm talking about when I'm referring to the classical, or the classically understood sword archetypal forms. Yes, I used a big word. I feel proud of myself. So let's take a look at this one and find out why it's such a terrible representation of a real sword, which is why I call it an approximation of a real one. Now granted, there are far worse designs out there than this one, but this one isn't perfect. For one, the guard is too thick. On the edges and in the center, this increases the weight of the overall blade. And if it, this, uh, this is decently heavy, it's very, uh, like yeah, it's certainly top heavy. Point of balance is horrendous. Now, interesting thing about point of balance, that isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you wanted a sword that has really powerful chopping capacity, you generally actually want a sword that's top heavy. This will really give a lot more driving force for the blade when, it's, uh, when you're attacking things. But for a blade to be articulated in the wrist, to be able to duel with, parry, gee man, this is a workout on the wrist. It's, it's got way too much weight in it. So, compare the two cross guards. One, nice and thin, and you can even look at historical examples. A great resource to look at wonderful examples of historical swords are Albion swords. They actually produce them, and they work off the Oakshot typology. What is the Oakshot typology? I'll probably make a video to go into detail explaining it, but uh, to summarize, it is a categorization of the classical European types of swords in the medieval period, we're looking at probably the high medieval period, but there are, you know, there are some exceptions, there's kind of Viking-like swords, but it puts them all into a category list, that is, that, hence the typology. And Albion swords make a sword for each one on the typology, and it's just an incredible resource to look at what swords are really like. Though, honestly, I'm not sold on the great swords. It's kind of funny, they probably research it way more than me, but I have a few opinions on great swords that I'll share with you in another video. Now, now if I was to put this sword into a category, it, it would definitely be classed as a bastard sword. Um, I have a video that explains, you know, the sword type, so please refer to that if you're wondering what I'm talking about. Just to cover it briefly, a bastard sword is a subclass of longsword. So all bastard swords are essentially longswords, but not all longswords are essentially bastard swords. A wonderful example of standard longsword proportions is the good old synthetic sparring sword. They're available online, many, you know, online retailers sell them, and as you see, I stole this one from my wall. Now when comparing the two, you can clearly see the longsword has a longer blade and, of course, a longer handle. Uh, this one here is obviously not an arming sword, the blade is uh, 
too long and the handle's too long. Uh, you see it extending past my fist, you know, substantially there. So this falls very firmly into the category of bastard sword. But it's just too heavy, gee, oh, no, yeah. Never want to use it, um, yeah. Now, of course, the other thing that really makes this sword an approximation of a real sword, not a real one, is uh, the steel that's made out of This is, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure, it doesn't really say on the blade, but it'll just be stainless steel, you know, and it's not good for sword quality. You, need, you want a good, uh, you know, good carbon grade, strong spring steel for a blade. So, <clears throat> you know, people would call it a real sword because, you know, it has, is made out of metal, but it's not really a real sword. I mean, it's just a, it's a crappy reproduction, but it looks cool. I mean, that's, that's why I got it, it looks cool. So when giving examples of swords, I'll be using the ones that I've built because they're just more accurate to what they're like. And if I'm trying to educate people or at least share opinions on what I think about swords, these do a much better job.